The reason why we may find it hard to comprehend the level of pure evil that goes on here is because we put ourselves into the equation and look at it from our perspective through our own eyes. And it, we find it hard to comprehend how this level of such an evil can exist and be perpetrated against every living sentient being. We find that hard to, to grasp fully because we aren't capable of that. Spirits like us can't even fathom something that diabolical. And when we're thinking about it, it's hard to believe. But there are entities that are the complete opposite of us who have no problem fulfilling these dastardly evil things and don't even break a sweat, don't even feel any guilt, any shame, any remorse, any fear or anxiety about it. And there are people in human meat suits that act the same way. And these are called psychopaths. And psychopaths will stop at nothing in getting what they want, how they want, when they want. And that is exactly what these entities that play the role of spirit guides and God and these holy, these holy beings who are basically untouchable in you know in our position we hold these beings in such high regards and they gaslight us and lie to us and manipulate us into accepting that when all along we've always held higher morals and higher ethics and higher values than these evil beings and it's been in our faces all this time all this time it's been in our faces and yet we are refusing to see it because of the manipulation that these beings are so so good at doing to us they will manipulate you into believing that you're you are the problem for every atrocity and sin on this earth in this realm, whatever this place is, that you had no idea coming into. You had, there's nothing you did previously to you being incarnated that brought any evil or any suffering into this place. The suffering was imposed upon you the moment you were in the womb. The moment you were in the womb because all of the toxins and all the chemicals and all the suffering of your parents and their anxieties and their stresses, it all is inflicted upon you. Yet you were born with sin. You were born with the desires of the flesh that you did not ask for, that are programmed into you. Programmed into you against your will, against your consent. And you can fight that programming till the day you die. But it will most likely always be there, even if you are very um, controlled in ways of controlling those desires and those instincts. It'll still be there in the back of your mind, in the back of your, your bodily functions, because the body wants to survive. The body has its own will and its own desires. So that's imposed upon you. But you have to rein that in and control that. So they want you to think that you are their problem when it's imposed upon you. Okay, I, get, I think you know what I'm saying now. And even with those impositions of character and will and desire that you don't want, still somehow you come to a place where you transcend that animalistic behavior in ways that make you a moral person, that make you have high values and ethics. And you can look around at the suffering of this place and bring judgment upon it. Bring judgment of evil. Because 
without that judgment, evil has full reign on any and everything. And that's what it wants. That's what it wants. It wants you to accept that evil. It wants you to glory in it even. Oh, it's lessons. Oh, you're learning something. Oh, it has to be this way. Free will. You see, there's something terribly wrong with saying you chose these sufferings before you came here. Because who would honestly look at an innocent child who has no control or autonomy, really, and does not know what it does with full consciousness? And to see it being manipulated, forced, abused, and tormented with the unspeakable acts that happened in this place. And all the grief and suffering and pure horror in their eyes and tell them, it's okay, you chose this. Or, it's okay, this is part of God's plan. Or, hey, It's going to be okay. In the end, God wins. Or, this is all part of life. And in life, we are given free will. So it is wrong of some higher force to impose my free will on my delight and pleasure in bringing you suffering. And I know that I'm in fact, stopping your free will by doing this against your will. But you see, God's on my side. God's on the side of the perpetrator and not the victim. Because in essence, God is the perpetrator. So we're, we're gaslighted into believing all of these things when the whole time we were the ones with the higher morals and the higher, higher standards than these so-called deities and gods. It's because these things are psychopathic. Psychopathic in nature and does not have any empathy towards your suffering and your plight in this unbearable, forsaken realm. And it's easily proven with all the spiritual practices and the spiritual beliefs that people dance through in coming up with justifications on why these evils exist. These spiritual beings are far lesser than you. And they're jealous of that. They are jealous of the fact that you actually are superior to them. Even in this fallen state that they've put you under, you still can become superior to them. Think about it. You are already morally and spiritually superior to these beings. Even though you've been subjected to all kinds of manipulations, programming, brainwashing, lies, deceptions, immense abuse and suffering, that you've been programmed to avoid that, so you make up these coping mechanisms that make you avoid those things, which further entraps you in non-free will. Yet, with all of that, somehow you've still come out on top of these infinite, free, superior in consciousness and ways of the world and how things work and truth. (laughs) You come to realize it's all bullshit because these things are psychopathic predators. And no matter how much they stomp you into the dirt with their shoe. And they may be above you, lording over your life in perspective. But in true reality, you are the superior one. So I think that's what makes them so jealous of you. If something lacks the empathy... And they can't empathize with you and why you feel 
a certain way, then that being is incapable of looking out for your best interest or even wanting your best interest because it is actually showing it's in it for itself. It is in it for itself. And the moment you take away your so-called ego, I feel like there's different, there's different ways you can look at the ego. One, yes, there's the programmed ego, the survival mechanisms that you think are you, which runs your life, that relates you more to this, um, more to this mind virus that has been infected. But there's also the real you, the individuated you, the you that is experiencing this. And it may be an illusion. It may be a fake reality. But the experience that you're having is real in that. And to discount that will bypass any sort of righteousness, any sort of actual good will and morality because without that you're just awareness and all awareness can do is experience so wouldn't that make the perfect slave if all you can do is experience things you're just the awareness of it with no judgment with no action or will of your own and that's that's, that may be what's going on. So there's an awareness behind our lives that is taking all of our experiences and using it unbeknownst to us and will not tell us why it, it's happening this way and why it needs it and what these experiences are doing. But we are that ego, so to say, that has to go through it and everything that we experience is some kind of ex- loose extraction going on, but will not tell us. We have to figure this out all by ourselves. So they want you to get rid of this identification in some sort so that everything can be justified. Everything that goes on here can be justified if you don't judge it. If we do judge it, it wants us to place the judgment on on the victims and on the things that are not in control. It's just the, the reactions of a artificial psychopathic machine that churns all of these things out of it because it does not care about the consequences of the effects on your life. It just is in it for itself. It's like a farmer looking out on its field of chickens and not thinking twice about how those chickens may feel, but only looking towards the reason and the purpose of that realm that it created to feed itself at any and all cost. Now, if those chickens get sick, Or if they get unruly, the farmer is forced to take care of that. And just because the farmer is taking care of those things does not mean it has your best interest in mind. It just means it is doing what's best for it by helping you. Helping you brings it what it wants. And not everybody is afforded with that so-called help from above. And I just don't get how these so-called you know, righteous, holy entities can pick and choose when to help somebody and when not to help somebody. Who gets a blessing and who doesn't get a blessing? How is that moral or good or righteous to have some random reason to help somebody? Whether it be because it's worshiping you or because it's helping you get what you want or need. These beings fear us, obviously, because we have a higher capability to reach consciousness that is much higher than they are. 
I know this is true. But somehow, we were entrapped here. Just because you have a higher consciousness does not mean you are protected by manipulation, from manipulation. Because like I said before, we can't really conceive of the lengths that evil will go in order to get what it needs, to get what it wants. That doesn't mean just because you can be outsmarted or manipulated that that being is higher than you. It just means of the depths that it will fall to get what it needs. The selfishness, the self-centeredness, the depths that it will fall to get what it wants from you. So these are fallen spirits, obviously. Now, I don't know if uh, maybe they keep keep falling. (laughs) And the smarter they get, they think they are, the more they fall. So they designed a realm. This was intelligently designed. Everything was intelligently designed. Your body was intelligently designed. I'm not saying it was intelligently designed for a good purpose, but it was designed. You can look at the anatomy of your body and how it functions and how it runs and how it does not need your consciousness to run itself. Yeah, it needs a soul to to animate it. But you yourself do not control all the thousands of functions your body does in any given day. So it is a biological machine designed for what? Well, designed to entrap human consciousness. And I'm saying human because that's the only one I have. It is designed to entrap your consciousness. It is designed to mimic you in a way that you believe in. And this realm is artificially created for what? To host us, to have us in. But it's not a well-suited place for anything to thrive, for anything to actually grow in consciousness. It is a place of entrapment. It is a place of entropy and decay and stifling stifling of your consciousness. Because you are put in this place knowing full well of all of the evils that are being perpetrated against Everyone and everything. Just just from nature itself. But on top of that layer, on top of predation of nature and life eating life and suffering being at the core of that and having all of the, the nervous system that brings immense amount of pain. And not only that, the emotions and the, the desire to desire with nothing ever fulfilling that. You can't, you can't bring fulfill, fulfillment to those desires because you're lacking. You're lacking, so you need more and more and more, so you're never fulfilled, you're never full. And the, constant, and the constant negative effects of that, fear, worry, anxiety, all of these things, survival, being at the root of everything that's here, the survival drive will drive you mad because any moment is a moment of death. So that, and then you got the uh, societal structures on top of that. You got the governmental structures. You got everything is poisoned. Everything is toxified. Everything is, everything is misleading you and lying to you. Everything that you've known is a flat out deception. There's m- the money system is is meant to enslave you. It's meant to put you on the hamster wheel of life, running, running, running for a little bit of paper that doesn't exist, and that's your life. I can go further and further into it, but everything is based 
off of that. Everything is based off of deception and knowing that you would know nothing when coming into this world and stuffing you in that body and not telling you a god dang thing about anything and leaving you to the wolves on this realm. What, what do you expect is going to happen? What do they expect is going to happen? They victimized you, abused you, and then told you it was your fault. Huh. Sounds like a psychopath to me. Hmm. Sounds like these things want to make you the problem. Because it has created something for it that you have a problem with. So if you just accept what is, all your problems seem to go away until the pain comes. It's easy to just, oh, accept things for what they are. Don't judge. Don't have any identification with anything. Don't don't put your ego into it. Just become awareness until that suffering gets amped up, then what? Your ego comes quickly running back, crying, screaming, because the torture is unbearable. Unbearable. And like I've said before, our level of comfort usually will dictate how we feel about this life. Even though once you're aware, truly aware, no level of comfort will justify any of this because no worldly comfort is good or worth any of it. It's a fleeting pleasure, a fleeting feeling. Like I said, it'll never bring you happiness. It'll never bring you fulfillment. And hypothetically, if it did, what a sad, miserable soul you must be to think It's okay for you to live in heaven while everything else around you lives in hell. And all it takes is that comfort level for you to slide down that comfort level into the uh, abyss of actual reality. And then you'll have a problem with it. Then you can see the horrors of the world because you're actually going through it. But a lot of people also can't see it because they're gas lit they're gas lit into believing that it's they're the problem so they'll still be worshiping the so-called creator of this realm or these deities even when they're in absolute agony living in shit thinking it's their fault they can't get anything they can't they can't seem to manage in this world in this place so they pray and they pray and they pray and they just wish that they could change whatever is wrong with them. When the whole time they've been being played, like I said, if this is a real spirit, they were stuffed and forced into the body, traumatized as a young child, had all these character defects that they didn't ask for, they didn't want. They just survived what they went through. And now they have to work their whole life in coming back to normal, baseline level, how they would maybe be if they didn't have those traumas. But all those things were scripted and planned out before they even came here. Because we have these these pre-birth memories and these, these councils that we're talking about what we want to experience in life. But really, it's what they want you to experience in life. And you're just blindly accepting it like a play. You're just being the character, playing out all these things, being unconscious. So in that way, yeah, the ego of the character you're playing needs to go away. And you need to bring awareness to who you actually are outside of this place. I am much more than Joshua. I am much more than the limitations that have been placed upon me. But at the same time, I have experienced these things and I have come to a certain knowledge that I am going to hold with me and never forget Because me forgetting is me justifying and sweeping under the rug 
everything that's happened here. And the same will happen to you if you get rid of the so-called ego that they want you to get rid of. The, the real you, the real you needs to know about what happened in this place. The real you needs to be aware that this is not a good place to go, to incarnate into. And whatever they are telling you outside of here is a fabrication, is a deceptive lie from psychopathic deities. Well, deities as in beings that have a higher, they have have more knowledge than us. So they seem like they're gods, but really they're keeping us at a dumbed down level and deceiving us. What kind of gods would need to keep us at such a low level of consciousness and constantly deceive us and torture us. What kind of God is that? It sounds like if this God or gods actually were more powerful than us, they wouldn't have to use deception. They wouldn't have to entrap our consciousness in a lower realm. And not only that, but deceive and lie to us from the moment we're born and then dumb us down through propaganda and toxins and societal things, everything, it wouldn't have to do that. If our consciousness outside of here is actually making decisions unaware of what actually happens here, they get some kind of bird's eye view or it's like they watch, they watch us, who we are now, on TV screen, and they're like disconnected, like, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, but they don't actually fully experience it like we do, and they can't actually fully comprehend what's going on. They can't empathize with us. If that's true, we have to break through and let them know, let them let ourselves know, hey, you better fucking listen, gosh darn it. I hate this place. Do not fucking send me there again under any circumstances. You thought this life was terrible. Wait till the next one. It's degrading you. It is perverting you. You don't even know it. You don't even know it. It's like we are your subconscious mind. Our higher self. I usually, I don't know what else to use. So the self outside of here who has more consciousness. Supposedly who is cut off from the actual experience of being down here. It comes down here, it does this thing, goes back, and it's cut off. It seems like so far away from what actually happened. But the memory or whatever it is, the the experiences of suffering, it's still there. The perversion is still there. So perhaps the more we incarnate, the more perverted our spirit, our essence actually becomes. But it's but it's kept away from us like the subconscious mind is kept away from us here. And then it starts to control and deceive us outside of here. And then we become like them. We can become these demons who has no free will, who only acts on evil. I'm just thinking about this. So because of the dream worlds that I've been in, it seems like I'm cut off from myself here too. So how is it so far fetched to think that in this when the spirit realm and the more real place than this we're cut off from these experiences down here so that's why we're so easily more deceived cuz it's like oh it's like a video game oh it's like a tv show it's it's not really me i'm just putting on this avatar and this character and no big deal no Mm-mm. we are real this is real what's happening Maybe a staged fake environment, but the suffering that we go through is real, goddammit. It's real. How it's inflicted upon us may not necessarily be real as in it's been scripted, but our reaction and our feelings and our suffering is real. Even if you're just living a mundane, boring life, you don't realize how much suffering and torture that actually is. Even if nothing 
so-called bad happens to you once you get out of here and your consciousness has the awareness of that life compared to what's actually real outside of this place, you will see that as pure torture. Pure torture. And it's hard to even fathom or put into words because they've limited our consciousness so much that these things are hard to even imagine. These higher beings are psychopaths. They don't give a fuck about you or us. These higher beings that we think are so holy and they they know everything and they have a plan for our lives and what's going on down here. How come they lack the basic common morals and the basic common decency and ethics and values of, let's just say, an everyday Joe here? Everyday Joe, I mean, just I've seen people who are homeless or who are the low, who are like on the low of society's standards with so much empathy and so high amount of morals and how they got to where they are is from the abuses of life. But I'm saying those people have a higher moral compass, a higher value and actual empathy of other people than these so-called spiritual entities that lord over our lives. Hmm. Think about that. You are more moral than these things because you see the suffering. You would stop someone from raping and murdering someone if you had the power. You would stop someone from stealing and destroying someone's life if you had the power. You would stop the poisoning of the food of everyone around you if you could you would break the shackles off of someone you love if you had the power to or you would die trying you would die trying i know a lot of you would put your life i I know we want to get rid of this life but i'm saying you would put yourself in harm's way just to help somebody else I mean, you would put yourself in harm's way to help someone that you cared about and loved. Who needed it. You might even do that for a complete stranger. You see the suffering of others around you. And you would put yourself in harm's way to stop that. Yet these things are invincible, so to say. All powerful and all knowing and all loving. But they can't comprehend that if they were incarnated into a fleshly body and they were the ones doing the tormenting and the abusing or they were the ones just allowing it to happen. They would be swiftly brought to justice by us little meat sacks, by us little lowly beings. They would swiftly be brought to justice and no one would have any sort of justification for why that spiritual high evolved being Once coming to incarnate in this world, doing what it fucking does, they would have no question on why that is evil and why that must be stopped and put and put away, be gone with. You despicable, deceiving, lying little snakes. But since they're above us, and they love bomb you, and they manipulate you and your emotions just like psychopaths do, they put on this good image. Look at all the goodness and holiness I am. Now I need you to bow down and worship me. And I'm going to dictate what's going to happen to you. And it's going to be all kinds of evil. But hey, it's for your good. It's for your benefit. Now, the more you wake up to this, the more obvious it is. And it's been obvious the whole entire time. Yet we've been conditioned since from a young age to believe that just because it's a spiritual entity outside of this realm that seems to have more power, which just means more knowledge, we have to listen and agree with the psychopath. Even though we don't understand, you hear that a lot. You hear that a lot. We aren't capable of understanding why God or the spirit realm does what it does. Because we are down here, but once we're out of here, we will know exactly why. 
try telling that to someone who's abusing someone you love. You come and say, hey, what the hell is going on here? And they say, you just don't understand. You don't understand from your lowly perspective. God has a plan for me. God's plan is for me to abuse this person. It's for their benefit. It's for their good. These things are psychopathic parasites, predators, preying on you, preying on your consciousness, and deceiving you into thinking, to giving your power away, and bowing down to these criminals, these parasites. Take back your power and your awareness and realize how you're being manipulated.